You are now listening to the DFW's number one podcast show, Pastor to Pastor. Come in, make yourself comfortable, and enjoy your time with pastors across the DFW, nation, and the world pour out their hearts, Pastor to Pastor. Their desire is to live for Christ Jesus and serve Him. You are in the presence of God's shepherd given unto you, Pastor to Pastor. Suele! Pastor Padilla, ¿cómo está? Hey, Pastor, how are you? It's good to be with you. Great to see you. I, I love that you you are uh, up to date with technology. <laughs> yeah, I, I try to keep myself up with all of that. It, it entertains me. <laughs> you, 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 you know what? I'm, I'm glad you said that because uh, I, I, a, mí, a mí me encanta también. I mean, I, I love it. Yeah. I, 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 lo I love what I do. It... it uh, It, it gives me such a uh, another aspect in in my my personal walk with the Lord. Yes, that that challenges me, you know, to 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 expand the Word of God. It's just another way to share the gospel, and every you know, there's audiences everywhere. And right now, we live in a world where. Uh, the online audiences are sometimes being neglected, so I, I love being able to be a part of uh, just using technology to get to people. Yeah, and and you know what, Pastor, in the tiempo de de COVID in 2020, uh, you know the, this this is what happened. It, it forced us. Yes. It, it, it I mean it forced the church to get out of that uh, 1980s mentality of of the way we would pr produce a a church video. Correct, and forced us to use the 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 amazing technology that is available that had been available for quite a while, but we just hadn't jumped on it. You know, yeah. I, the pastors, I feel like the the this COVID thing, as bad as it was, and we understand that there were people who suffered a lot of loss from it. I think it was a way of of God just kind of shoving the church outside the walls and saying, "Hey, there's another way of doing things." It's not it's not a wrong way. It's just a different way of doing the things that, you know, he, he had called us to do. And I I, I grabbed a hold of it. I, I've been doing video for, oh, my gosh, the years I've been doing. Uh, wow. I remember when I was a kid, I would I would go into a closet with my little tape recorder that had a pitch control. Wow. So, go up to sound deep voice. And then I would <laughs> another person and I. I always been amazed by technology and I had micro cassette recorders and I would be doing my own little radio show. And then uh, when cameras started coming along, I started uh, buying webcams when they were like 320 by 120, the resolution. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so now, now that when COVID came, I was kind of a little bit prepared and I was yeah. able to help a lot of pastors and a lot of churches kind of set up their, their online uh, ministry when COVID hit. I was looking at a video today, and and by the way, everybody who's listening to us, you know, just sit back and relax. I mean, sit back yeah. and relax. Uh, you know, this is a pastor to pastor. Uh, pastors just opening our hearts as if we're just sitting down in our living room and just having a chat. Yes. Uh, you know, I was looking at a video today of, uh, I guess, seven years ago. Was it seven years ago? My Lord. Or maybe five years ago. Five years ago. And I have a little, you know, a little blue mic that you buy on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't, I, <laughs> and you know what? Let me, let me say this, Pastor Roberto, because a lot of Go ahead. Go ahead. I think this is very interesting. Yeah. You and I met online before we met in person. You and I we sure did, yeah. We were online friends. Was doing all his uh, uh the Wi-Fi stuff, remember? I remember the Wi-Fi stuff, yeah. Remember, I met you, and then you saw me with Brother Barrientos coming online, and yeah, uh, we we literally started chatting and talking as if we've known each other forever. Yeah, because yeah. we met online, and then like the first time we met in person, we're like, oh, there's the face to the to the boy. <laughs> <laughs> and we've always seen. So I think it's also good because it, it it helped us. If it wouldn't have been online, we probably would have never met. <laughs> no, and, and and going back to that little video, I was like, um, 
you know, because I wanted, I, I also had that aspiration, right? Uh -huh. Aspiration to, well, I, I got some time and, and I'm reading my word and, and, and I, I'm in my devotionals, I'm in my meditation and I want to tell somebody about it, but there's nobody walking through that door and, 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 and this and the other. And, and I got about an hour here that I can tell the whole world about what the Lord, you know, what, I, what, what I learned today about the Lord. And, huh? and so I bought this little mic and I didn't know how to connect it. I couldn't connect it. I didn't know what I was doing, but, <laughs> but, but it started to work and, and it's crazy porque me llamó una radio station de, de Fort Smith, Arkansas, Radio Vida, la estación oh. diferente. <laughs> And they call me and say, hey, Pastor, what's your what's your radio show? I said, man, I don't got a radio show. He said, do you want one? I said, absolutely. Praise God, man. Yeah. And so that's how I got, I started to get serious to where, yeah. okay, now I got to get a soundboard. Yeah. Now I got to get, uh, ¿cómo se llama el programa? Es el radio, radio. Oh, it, about it, broadcaster or something? Yeah, bro radio broadcaster or something. I had to learn it and all of a sudden, I was on the air. <laughs> I was on the air, man. But you know what? That's a great point because it, it shows it's a, it's a Gideon moment, right? You start yeah. working where nobody's watching, and then the angel of the Lord shows up and says, hey, I see what you're doing. I see you what see, you're yeah. doing. You see, that's why you're a great preacher, man. That's <laughs> why you're a great, you know, preachers, all you got to do is just, just talk, and a yes. sermon will come up. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's amazing because I, you know, every time I see Gideon, here's Gideon hiding in a little, uh, you know, in this hideaway. Yeah, to, in, in a wine press. And then the angel says, I like what you're doing and I want to take you bigger. And he's like, what? I'm the youngest one of my family and I am, I am the, I am a poor family. And God's the least of the least. And he's like, I care about that. I care about the heart. I care about what you're doing, and 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 I can use that, you know. And I think uh, it's a great message to anybody that's listening to us that they it might. Is. Yeah, I'm just here behind the scenes. You got to remember that before Jesus also became the Jesus of Nazareth that everybody knew, he was walking in the shadows for so long, and yeah. and it's 33 years. Only three of them are public. The rest of them are in the shadows. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that great? Isn't that, that great? That is amazing. That is, I mean, they, 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 I don't, I don't think we, we, we think about that. Yeah. That the uh, that thirty years are not written of. Yeah. yeah. And this, and this is why he said in the book of John, talking about if they were written, there wouldn't be enough, you know, books or pages or paper or Correct. to be able to fit those books in your library. Can you imagine? Yeah. And, 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 you know, and we're, everybody is in some kind of we're waiting in the shadows, you know, we're, we're all waiting in some area. It's might be ministry. It might be job related. It might be, you know, family, yeah. be marriage, you know, whatever. Some people, yeah. you know, just kind of say, Hey, you know, is that the tapa pasando el train? And it's like, no, it's not. Just, it's just my wagon hasn't crossed by, you know? <laughs> and, and also thank God for those shadow years. Yes. Yes. You know, because there's some, you know, my, my wife and I were, were, were talking about the other day. We we're like, man, can, can you imagine if, uh, you know, the years where we're growing up, can you imagine if social media was that in people's faces? You know, as I said, man, babe, it, I mean, it, it'd be real difficult to to for people to have seen that version and then say, wait a minute, a pastor? No way. Yeah. There, there's, there's no way I'm going to follow that guy. Yeah. And, and so yeah. if he would have told us back then what he was going to do with us now, we would have never, oh. even, you know, joined it. We There's been no way. <laughs> There's yeah. no way. You know, uh, I'm I'm going to the real Grand Valley, Lord willing, you know, because, I mean, right now, Pastor, there's a lot of people getting sick. Yes. I mean, as, as much as we, I mean, hey, people are getting sick. You know, take care of yourselves out there. Yes. And, and um, anyway, the plan is, if it's the Lord's will, we're going to the valley, which is getting even worse, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and it's more, it's, it's, it's not an evangelistic trip. It's not a go take care of past, you know, uh, things that I got to take care of. It's really just a, all right, babe, let's get out of here for a week 
and yeah. let's and let's regather emotionally, physically, and spiritually, and then come back y cerrar el año, you know, uh, uh, you know, doing God's will. Right. You know, and and yeah, and that, and as I'm saying that, uh, you know, I'm I'm going back to to the place where I I was not this version. This is not the version mm -hmm. that the valley has any recognition recognition of. Right. And, and and but I get I get a chance to go back and and um and go talk to some friends. Mm -hmm. You know, and go talk to some friends and go pray for some friends and and, and maybe even encourage a, a, another generation. Right. Even though it's not an evangelistic trip, but you know we pastors, I mean, yeah, we we, we do. You know, it's what we do. So, but anyway, I, I'm very excited about that. But uh, we pastors, but, when we go to the beach, we don't build uh, sand castles. We build sand pulpits. You know, we build your little pulpits, you know, instead of castles. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks for giving me ideas. Y también otra cosa, when I was going through, um, when, when, I, when I was going through that, mm -hmm. when I was going through that, um, the little blue mic. I call it the little blue mic. Uh -huh. uh, I would see you. I would see your stuff. And I'm like, man, I want that. <laughs> you know? And and it's and, 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 and this is what's crazy about and, and, and it's almost like almost the same thing as you know, um your spiritual walk. Mm -hmm. That you see others in in the brink of knowledge and understanding and wisdom and Wow, man! Y como quisiera estar ahí, verdad? Yeah. And but but you don't know the 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 work that it takes to get to that place because I'm pretty sure you spend a lot of money in mics. Yes. You spend a lot of money in wires and oh my wire. and, to, oh, <laughs> and apps. Try this app. Try that download. You know. Try yeah, this subscription. That subscription. Knowledge just throws you a higher one, and then now you want that one, you know? Like, by the time you, you're like, okay, I figured it out, then they're like, oh, that's outdated now. Here's the next step, you know? <laughs> yeah, you, you know, when, when we first started um, New Life, uh, we call it at the Blue Walls mm -hmm. in Garland. Me acuerdo que, que our, our worship leader would be, hey, but we need some wires and some mics, and and I'd be like, yeah, 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 just just buy the cheapy ones. Just, you know, a little my and he would look at me like offended. <laughs> yeah, he was like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> offended. And I'm like, well, 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 what type of mic do you want? Oh, we, we want a sure mic. Yeah. Oh, that way. How much? A hundred and so. No, no, no. Get, get the <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. They, like, where's where was marketplace at that time, right? Or <laughs> yeah, okay. And and it's one of those un, until until, until you're working with it, yes, you you find out how important the quality is, and you realize that you you pay, you've already paid three times what you could have paid the first time, right? <laughs> I was about to get there, you know, yeah. and, and very similar to to our spiritual walk. Yeah, you know, we 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 wanna we wanna do it the cheapy way. Mm -hmm. You know, stay on the edge and not really jump off or walk out of the boat and. Right. And we find out that in order for us to increase our faith, we're gonna have to get out of the boat, and yeah, and, yeah, and and do those things that seem impossible. There's but, no, man, they're available. You know, there's no shortcut to the results of work. If you put in the work, you will get the results. And a lot of people want the results without putting in the work. And and that's where I think the secret of things are because we live in this society where everything is. Uh, instant gratification. I mean, I don't know if you've ever looked at this pastor, even in, as far as church membership goes. Mm -hmm. You know, like everybody wants to, uh, you know, like I remember when mem church membership was a big deal. You filled out this form with like 35 questions and commitments and, you know, and all this stuff. And it was it was like you're committing yourself to serving. And and I understand why. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not yeah. saying that's the way it should right. be. But look at the world that we live in where you can log in and become a member to anything with an email and a name. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you realize, but the form for Facebook is longer than a church membership form. It is. But but the but the entrance to it is just a name and an email. Yeah. And once you give them your name and your email, and then you set up a password, then they start telling you, you have 20 more steps to finish your profile. 
and we go and fill it out and we we're literally what we're doing is we're committing to the guidelines and to the procedures of facebook yet when it comes down to the church we're not willing to give the church even our phone number because we want to be private yeah you know we we we, we don't want our information yeah out there and and so we don't commit to serving and we don't commit to the church and we don't commit to the to the work that we do uh with the church but they we're committing to instagram and we're committing to you know all kinds of social media but the entrance is easy the entrance is a name and an email but mm -hmm. the then i don't know if you know this but you cannot remove your facebook profile unless you delete every picture that you've ever uploaded to it yeah you can't you know, and so it's impossible that your commitment is your life. You know, every picture from your baby, grandbaby, uncle, graduation that you've uploaded, that's mm -hmm. your contract to Facebook. And so a lot of times we want to serve God the shortcut way by saying, mm -hmm. I'll just go to church on Sunday. I'll just go on Wednesdays. I'll volunteer here. But we don't have a life commitment to it. We don't have memories with it. We don't have a, a, a root base that holds us on to it. And I think that that's very important that we are willing to commit to all the superficial stuff very easily, mm -hmm. but then the things that count, that's where we struggle with it. Yeah, very superficial commitment, very superficial consistency. Mm -hmm. And and also, to be honest with you, I well, like I said, I, I, I was not raised in church. And, and, and I say that very disappointed and mm -hmm. how I wish I would have. But um, I also remember in 2009, I remember being a member of Living Word Church in Garland, Texas with Pastor Sergio Nava. Oh, uh, and it was an Assemblies of God Church. Mm -hmm. And I remember part of that application application it was, part an of that, it was an application like i was applying to be a to see if i was good enough <laughs> like i was like oh my god i got i i better fill this up really well or yeah. i'm not gonna be accepted that that's how it felt like yes. like i really want to be a member of this church and uh there was also a, a line there that you were supposed to write your previous church or the church you came from yeah, your transfer. And, yes. And pastors literally communicated with each other. Yes. And, and then the, the, the yep. and, and, and the term chirp, chirp you know, church hopping offends a lot of people. Yeah. And it's amazing that the ones that are offended are the ones that are hopping. Correct. Yeah, you, you know, don't, don't want to yeah. find out. That's the thing. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, and I understand. I mean, you know, I guess sometimes it, it, it is a, a term that, you know, it, it really doesn't describe the person because in reality, uh, there are seasons in your life. I right. understand that. But even even in a job, I had the sense to tell my employer, hey, uh, you know, two weeks to me wasn't even enough. Yeah. So there were times where I would, I would, I, I literally had more than two weeks yeah. because of the position that I held, what was a position of leadership. Mm -hmm. So to me, I found it very rude and very irresponsible to even give them two weeks because that wasn't enough time for them to find someone, even that somebody that was going to bring up from the company to, to, to do my job. I, I found it very difficult to do my job. So, so I would give them a little bit more time mm -hmm. and, 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 and every job, yeah. well, I would say there was a couple of jobs where I, I got, I got fired because I did something really bad, like punch somebody. And, but, but that was way back there. Hey, but there, there, there were, there were times that my job, because of what I did and the position I held, uh, I I found it very important to to tell my employer, hey man, uh, thank you very much for, you know, for taking care of my family, you know, mm -hmm. for the benefits that was offered to me in this company, and but you know what, I'm moving into a different season. Yes. Uh, I'm getting more pay. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna get more pay. You know how I wish, Pastor Padilla, because you 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 you've gone through this with your parents, with yourself. And, and you know the pain that is involved 
and seeing a person or a whole family leave. And but this is the worst part, que no te dicen, pero le dicen yeah. a todos. Yes. And and contrary to you, I grew up in the church. You know, I my mm-hmm. my my dad's been in ministry since I was a kid. I remember traveling with my dad to different churches where he would go minister. And then when we came here uh, 36 years ago, uh, my dad was already in ministry. As a matter of fact, we stayed here because his ministry basically transferred here to the U.S. And uh, 33 years later, he's been pastoring the same congregation after leaving the church where we originally came with, which was Central Park Church with Pastor Adolfo de la Garza. Yes. And and so three years after that, he started pastoring the church where he currently is at. And and yes, and it's been transitions where they're painful transitions because people, you know, some of them walk out. Some of them let you know they're leaving because of jobs, because of change of cities. And, you know, they need better schools for their children. So it, now it becomes an inconvenience. And so you understand those stages. But then you also know that there are the actual church hoppers, which are people that are just looking into what will take them faster to their end goal. You know what yeah. I mean? A it's consumer not, mind. A consumer uh, mind. Yeah, it's, it's not even about ministry. It's not about the kingdom. It's about how can I get to where I need to get to by hopping into churches that will offer me what's next for me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and having grown, grown up in church, you know, my dad, a pastor for 30-something years, uh, I've been I've been able to work in our denomination uh, uh, with the Church of God, uh, not only locally but then district wise, and then from the district goes to region wise, and then regional goes to national. And I've been on national committee boards, and then I've been a regional director for several. And it happens at all levels. Like people will drop a church for a better opportunity. Like pastors will drop a church for a better opportunity. Yeah. Um, Ministers will will switch careers, quote unquote, because of better pay. Uh, and then you go to the local church and you you find the people that will leave you because over there you can be men's director and over here you can be evangelism director. And it's not even God led. It's a lot of times it's just a part. Uh, it's opportunismo. You know, it's yeah. just opportunity for you to take something that you've been wanting. It's, mm-hmm. it's it's not even God led, but but it's it's just the ego that wants to go places and and you know we're here talking pastor to pastor, so we we can be a little bit more upfront. Yeah. With, and and there are pastors who have been neglected and hurt. Yes. By people who are looking for personal interest. Absolutely. And, and so and so we we deal with this situation in the church. Uh, if it hurts a company financially when a when a manager just walks out, imagine what happens in a church when a men's director just walks out of a church and 20 men that were looking up to him mm-hmm. because he found a better opportunity because he wanted 50 men instead of 20. Yeah. They walk out because they want the number, not the ministry opportunity. Yeah. That that hurts the church, you know? When yes. when a worship leader walks out because over there they give you Twenty dollars more for the day for playing than for you to stay here with a place where you built a relationship for ten years, fifteen years, and then yeah. you just walk out. It doesn't only hurt the band; it also hurts the the atmosphere of the church. Uh, when when a when a women's director, you know, gets mad because thirty ladies don't want to do what she says, and mm-hmm. she's like, you know what, I'm gonna walk out. It we don't we don't realize the damage that we do to the kingdom. Just the same way that an employee doesn't know when they say, "Oh, I'm just going to walk out." Yeah, production is going to go down. Uh, yeah, income is going to lower. You know, so we don't realize that all these things. Going back to Gideon, Gideon wasn't looking for a position. Gideon mm-hmm. in chapter six of Judges. If you've never read the story, if you're just a, a yeah. audience member, Judges chapter six. He's mm-hmm. sitting there saying, "Man, these guys have been coming and stealing our food for years." Yep. I'm going to sit down and do something about it for my family. Mm -hmm. Little did he know that doing that one thing for the small crowd, which was his immediate family. The least of the least. Was going to turn him into the next general of the army of Israel. Yeah. (laughs) Amazing, huh? You know, and and then God says, but we ain't going to use any weapons. We're going to use a clay pot. We're going to use some torches and we're going to use some uh, trumpets or horns. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, what are you talking about? You know? We, we can go through the whole story. I'm not going to go into it. <laughs> Amazing. But then comes getting at the end, and, and he wins the victory over the very people that 
while he was hiding yeah he, he was just doing what was right yeah. you know and and yeah. god sees us when we're working in the little and god sees us when we're working with the few and then it's those hidden years that take us to the bright years and i tell this to a lot of young leaders when i'm doing leadership training everybody wants the spotlight what yeah. we don't realize is that the brighter the light the bigger the exposure of all the junk that's around us mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. Because when, when the when the light just hits us, then we find out como es tu carácter, how you treat people, are you oh, narcissistic, yeah. are you self-centered, or are you Christ-centered? And when the spotlight hits, a lot of people want the light mm -hmm. until the light reveals the reality of who you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and that's you know, the yeah, I, I I love it, man. I not not only that, but. Gideon always also offers us a look at his, his true personality or his character. Mm -hmm. He wasn't the bravest. No, he wasn't the bravest because you you can even argue that there there were some things that he that he did do. He was yeah. obedient. He was obedient, and he could have done some things that that could have seemed more brave. Yes, but at least he did them I mean, when he took down those idols and he and he waited for them to be at night. You know what I've come and, yeah with Gideon. I've come down to the to, to the point of just realizing that Gideon wasn't the smartest or the sharpest knife in the drawer and and yeah. the big, but he was. And this is the key word that I found with Gideon. He was available. Available. Of available. You know, that's what God is looking for. Just. I'm not asking you for you to prove yourself to me. I just want to know that you're available so that I can prove myself through you. You know, because yeah. if we prove ourselves to God, we come out short. Oh like, yeah. The Bible says that even our highest accomplishment is just like a dirty rag for him. It is. And so God is just saying, are you available? Because if you're available, I can do something with the availability. Yeah. What I deal with is that prideful heart and that the egocentric you know attitude because ultimately it's not about you and so Gideon gives God 15 tests before he goes into ministry but but he was available and God found him available God saw he was there doing what nobody else was doing when nobody else was watching and God said I've been watching you when nobody was watching and mm. and I see what you're doing and then from there I can do something yes. and, and and you're so humble to do what I tell you to do because you got nothing to lose. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have too much things to lose. They lose their agenda. They lose their their popularity. Their, their, and they don't want to lose that. And so, therefore, they don't end up doing kingdom work. They are, they end up doing yeah. work, but not necessarily kingdom work. You know? And a lot Amazing. of people, because they're busy, they're actually being successful. And business mm -hmm. is not success. No, it's not. It's, it, <laughs> but somebody told me, so, so I, I I remember trying to impress somebody, mm -hmm. and and I told this person, man, I'm very busy. And she goes, man, you are very busy, but are you effective? I'm right. telling you, man, that woo, that <laughs> that that changed my whole perspective. Yeah, and how I I do things. And yes, there are times, Pastor. I'll admit that I'm just a busy person. I yeah. I I love to be busy, but that's that that's my defense that's my defense against any type of uh um uh, um matters uh, uh of of the world yeah and so i i i busy myself up to the matters of the kingdom but right. at the same time i i also have to realize that sometimes that's not smart because now you, you can become a martha yeah a very quick Martha and and and, and, I'll, and trust me as pastors and, and like like we're here we're opening our hearts pastor to pastor yeah. there is times where I'm complaining to God yeah and I'm like Lord look at the leadership and, and I wish the leadership would be here and how come the leadership doesn't support in this and supporting that and and and, and I could just hear the Lord I bet you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and pastor let me let me tell you this a lot of times we end up busy with things that God didn't even ask us to do. Well, that's even worse. 
You know, because, and I understand helping people. And, and believe me, I, I come from that generation where my, pa my, my dad as a pastor, he helped people get their driver licenses, you know, a new generation of immigrants. We help people buy homes. We help people. But then it got to the point where my dad wanted to be in every home purchase and he wanted to be in every car purchase and he wanted to be, you know, you don't have to be there in the picture for every single success of every family member of the church. That's you right. can get Started and watch this. This this was a boom. Like it, it blew my mind when I realized great leadership is not the one that is always there. Great yeah. leader, the one that is so successful that they can leave as soon as they made a leader out of somebody. Yes. Jesus came for thirty three years. He worked three and a half years, and then he left. If Jesus would have stayed, the church wouldn't be where it's at. Not because God can't make it will happen. Right. Jesus came and made such a great team of leaders. That he said, I've prepared you, I've given you the resources, I'm sending you my counselor to 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 push you forward, but yeah. you know already enough and you've seen me do it. Now you go do it yourself. You know, instead of saying, I'm gonna stay here with you to make sure that you get it done. No, Jesus said, I gotta go back up to my kingdom and run my kingdom. You yeah. run this that I've made here, call the church, yeah. and I'm leaving it in good hands. And so the greatest mark of his success was that he left. A lot yes. of people think that the success relies on the fact that they're still there. Yeah. They're still there in baby dedications. They're still there. Like I dedicated this one and this one and this one and this one. And then all of a sudden we realized like, yeah, you got 50 pictures, but did the family stay? Did the marriage right. change? Did the children, yeah. do those children that you dedicated still serve the Lord? Where are they at? Yeah. Yeah, you know and those I mean? marriages, those marriages that that you that you performed the ceremony, where are they at? Right. You know, and and, and those are those are very um, uh, the, when reality hits you. Mm -hmm. You know, where where you've been there and you've done the ceremony, you've done the dedication, and then somewhere somewhere in that life, or or in that path of their life. Uh, you 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 you're not part of no more, yeah. For whatever reason, and, and we have to look at the why. Is it the why? Now, is it most of the time? Let let let's let's be real. Is because they've moved on to another season. Yes. Spiritually, uh, physically, career wise, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but there are some times that, especially as a as a new pastor and and you're growing and and these are these are your unfortunately those are your best teaching moments right or learning moments yes unfortunately that there's other lives at stake it's not like it's not like you chop the the the, the steak the wrong way and well we'll get another steak no this mm -hmm. is this is a a person's life yes that we're affecting mm -hmm. and and I've had to learn some very tough Tough lessons like that. And the you know other thing, what? yeah, we have to realize that when your families in the church begin, their seasons begin to change. We have to start asking God how the church seasons need to begin to change. Mm. Because not everybody in our church is a, is a new convert at some point. Right. So sometimes we continue to minister to people to get saved and they're already saved. <laughs> Sometimes we continue to minister to young marriages, but they're already in their 50s and their kids are going to college and we're still talking to the ones that have five-year-olds and we yeah. don't have couples that have five-year-olds. Everybody's going to college. So the, the seasons in the church also change. Yeah. And a lot of times we just stayed rooted and grounded and ministering to that generation that we first ministered to, mm. that the families change their seasons, but the church doesn't. So the families are obligated to change churches yeah. because the church is no longer rendering them what they need as a family. That's right. So it's not saying change the DNA of the church. It's no. new ministry. Yeah. Grow new opportunities. Make those parents that are now having children that are in high school become mentors to those who are starting with their two- and three-year-olds and build upon what you already have Instead of trying to say, don't worry about the church, I'll still keep on doing it all because God mm -hmm. called me, he didn't call you. No, but he called you to make leaders. Yeah.
some apostles, some teachers, yeah. some, you know, and so to everyone, he gave a role to be a part of the same kingdom. And I think a lot of the issues that we sometimes find in the church mm. with all due respect, and I, and I honor those brave men uh, from the first generation. My dad is a first generation minister mm -hmm. where they gave their all. Uh, but at the same time, they owned it all with, and, and allow me to say this, it was such a, it was such a universal church mentality mm. that I don't know if you remember even in the Cantinflas movies where yeah. not even the sheriff had as much power as the priest. Right. Like the That's sheriff right. would say, this is going to be done unless the priest said otherwise. Right. And I think our churches a lot of times ran that way where the husband would say, we're doing this. But then the wife would say, but let's see if the pastor approves it. Right. Yeah. Pastor that, yeah. That, yeah. The big yeah. Role in families where man began to feel like, hey, wait a minute. I'm your husband, not the pastor. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, well I'll, I'll, and, and I'll make two points on that before I forget. And what one of the things that on my end that I remember when I was I was working and mm -hmm. pastoring. I knew that the ceiling had to be raised right. because if the ceiling wasn't raised, then these people were growing and they were hitting the, the ceiling and there was really nothing else for them. Yes. And so they had to move themselves into another place where they could grow spiritually, et cetera, et cetera. It, it, it just people call yeah. that the law of the lid. You yeah. Know? The law of the lid. I like that. The law and of the lid. Higher then the lid allows it to go to, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Our church absolutely. is committed to, to the lid. The leadership is the lid. And if the lid cannot let those those things come up, it'll stop there, you know? Yeah. And and so whenever, whenever like, let's say you have a family whose children grew up in the church. Now they're 13, 14, and 15. But that church has such a strong children's ministry, but a weak teenage ministry, yeah. that family will be obligated to not hop to another church, mm. but look for another place because this church is so focused on elementary kids. Yeah. Family needs now help for the teenagers. Yeah. So they're obligated by the limitation of the church yeah. to leave the church, even though they love the pastor and they love the ministry and they love the people of the church, their needs have changed. Yes. There's perspective is not at the same place so as much as you love those children that are growing up with the same virtues as your children now you have different needs and you have to go find something for your kids and you can't sacrifice your teenagers because you don't nope. want to church yes right because That's then right. you'll be happy with the church and chasing after your teenagers on the street yeah because they're not going to want to go to church correct yeah correct. and 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 so it's it's a it's a whole organism Mm -hmm. It's a whole organism. The, the 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 second thing I wanted to point out was that allowing the the pastor to 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 fulfill his obligation or his role, mm -hmm. which is to shepherd. Yes, which, which is the the which is the the direction that Jesus told Peter. Yes, and he told him to shepherd to care, to feed, of course, to love. And those are our roles as the pastor. And, and that ceiling will, right, will rise up if you allow us <clears throat> as a pastor mm -hmm. to rise up that ceiling. But also, <clears throat> just like we're creating <clears throat> or discipling pastors, yes, those pastors have to disciple leaders. Yes. And those leaders have to disciple other leaders. Right. And, and, and so you get that same mentality like, <clears throat> if I leave my position, <clears throat> is there somebody ready to take my position? Yeah. And that's the question that every pastor should have and, and, and every leader should have. And here's another one that, that Jesus just showed it to us in flesh. And, and I add to what you're saying right now. And it's the fact that you not only do you allow your pastor to do his job so that he can raise that ceiling and and this is going to sound contradictory allow your pastors to make mistakes <laughs> i yeah. mean 
we have this standard on pastors of perfection and the moment they make a mistake we lose our faith in faith in them and then we want to say oh he's not a good leader anymore because he made a mistake right peter chopped a deer yeah. off guy before jesus was taken to his trial yeah. and jesus didn't say peter i'm cutting you off because of this no he said peter put put your knife up you know you made a mistake put your knife up this is not how we're gonna fix this yeah. and then jesus healed the ear of the gentleman you know and he said this thing has to happen you made a mistake he didn't say ah, you're out you know how i know this because a couple of hours later the rooster crows and the same peter yeah looks at him and jesus looks at him with eyes of love and says peter it's okay peter you made another mistake within 24 hours but you're gonna be all right and then you know how i prove it pentecost day Spirit yeah. comes down jesus never said or god never said peter you sit down because you made two mistakes right no he says rise up you are yeah. the greatest example of yes. my grace and love you made mistakes you said i'll go to the cross with you you said i will not do this you said this will not happen with me and now instead of saying you made three mistakes you're out jesus says get up and show people that my power and my forgiveness and my grace can make somebody that failed 15 times the greatest speaker of all times three right. people came to the lord that day Yes, amen. And I would also add to that 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 as Peter cut the ear, we can also argue and we can also point out that he didn't have help. Yeah. Because he, he wasn't assigned a, a Holy Spirit helper. Yeah. And so so I would say the same thing as well that even as pastors, perhaps, yes, I'm we're not talking about we're we're not we're not talking about moral moral mm -hmm. stuff. We're talking about leading decision making in leadership. Yeah. Because we're gonna make a lot of mistakes in leadership. Why? Because you're dealing with people. But and, the church yeah. led mistakes. You know, Absolutely, we yeah. Can't cut them off because they made a mistake. Because we, the pastors, are picking people up mistake after mistake, but God forbid you make a little mistake. And a That's lot of right. our marriages suffer as ministers, because we're trying to save so many marriages yes. that we're over here spending six hours helping this marriage not fall apart. Yeah. And we, we left our wife at home preparing the dinner that we didn't show up for. Yeah, amen. People don't You're... realize that we, we go through those things and yeah. then forbid they find out we had a problem in our marriage because now we're bad pastors because we can't handle our own marriage. Yeah, because we were trying to save your marriage. Yeah, <laughs> amen, amen. And, and 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 that goes back to, you know, th these are the lessons that we learn. Yeah. And and it comes back to that balance, you know. Yeah. For instance, I'll give an example in, in in my pastoral hood on Mondays, are my very, I, I, I don't use the word busy no more, mm -hmm. are the most active days, <laughs> uh, because on on, mon on Mondays are my um, discipleship. Uh, mm -hmm. marriage discipleship and I don't get home till nine o'clock. Yeah. But but I put everything on Monday. Yeah. Because I know Tuesday there's other discipleships that happen. Wednesday, of course, church. Thursday, Friday, me and my wife's evenings. Mm -hmm. Yo no voy a contestar el teléfono. Yeah. I'm just not going to. Yeah. And this is why I tell our, our other pastors, this is where you guys come in. Correct. This is where you pick up those phones. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't want to talk to us. They want to talk to you. Well, this is where you have to make yourself available yeah. to them, where you become an extension of myself. Yeah. And then, and then when you guys are not available, you're preparing others to be the extensions of you. Yes. So that there could be balance in all of our lives because it's like, hey, I I want to go on vacation just like the other guy. Right. You know, I I you know, this is our first vacation. Well, you know, we had a little getaway, but you know, we're not complaining. But what yeah. I'm saying is what I'm saying is it's okay. Yes. It's okay for you to go on vacation. Mm -hmm. It's okay, you know, just 
It's okay that I go on vacation. But yeah, we, you deserve we, to put up pictures too. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I want to put pictures of some my feet on the water. Yeah. <laughs> but you know? but but yeah, absolutely. And but but I but I, I love I love what you're saying because it all comes down to shepherding is leading. Yes. Because the 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 shepherding isn't telling people what to do. Yeah. But shepherding is 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 well I'll say it this, I'll say it this way that the shepherd the bible says that we that the sheep recognize his voice. So so in a sense it is telling people what to do but but they recognize his voice and the shepherd knew the sheep mm -hmm. and the sheep followed the shepherd. Right. So in a sense it is li listen to 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 the leader. Don't give listen. me some have a yeah. sermon. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I want you to. I'm I'm just pushing you. <laughs> but, but but you know, and and, it, and it's very interesting that, and I'm I'm glad we're having this conversation because I think a lot of pastors could use a lot of uh, uh, of this issues because a yes. lot of people feel guilty for making mistakes or from taking time off. Uh, one of the things that I've learned is that God knows more than I do what's next, <laughs> and and if I was the only reason why something could work, then I wouldn't need God. You know what I mean? Because because yeah. they have to always be available because God couldn't do it any other way. And so I just think that pastors need to be able, uh, you know, and, and I suffered from the same thing when I was pastoring, that you think that you have to rescue every situation. Yeah. And, and, and I'm not saying that you don't have to be available, but it's exactly what you were saying. If you can only talk to the pastor about your problem, then your source is not God. Your right. source the pastor and people need to understand that pastors are a resource but the yes. source is god and yes. so if you can't use a secondary pastor as your counselor and you're depending on the senior pastor as your counselor only then you've got a problem of idolatry mm. yeah yeah <laughs> you know, plain you simple are, you are placing your eggs on that basket and and the moment the pastor has an issue then your king, your your situation falls apart too because you put your eyes on a resource instead of a source. And so what we need to do is we need to teach people to to know the voice, but to also know that when the voice says, call my assistant pastor, is because I am putting my trust on that assistant pastor because he's been trained to do the work that you're looking for. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's and right. So, and so our churches have to understand that we are a community of, of of believers and a community of servants that we're all in the same interest and a lot of times we just focus on the people and not on the ministry itself i've i've been in a place where my wife is not super involved in ministry in the sense that she's not a public you know worshiper and preacher and teacher but there's been times that i get home and i share something with her just out of my frustration and then all of a sudden from nowhere she says something and I was like, that's the answer. That's what I've been waiting for. And I've been reading books. I've been reading, listening to podcasts, calling senior pastors and all this other thing. And then God gives this woman who's not super public the answer that I've been looking for. And and I'm just, and I don't tell her at the beginning because, you know, I don't want her to, que se sienta muy, nah, just kidding. But, you know, <laughs> but I sit there and meditate on it. And I was like, wow, isn't God amazing that he brings me the answer to a marriage problem, to a decision in church, to a purchase situation. And I remember this one time I was trying to deal with this family situation and she goes, Josue, have you realized that you're, 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 you're talking about a situation that is not church related? It's, it's a family issue mm -hmm. that that's not for you to handle. That's something for that family to handle in like, like they're replacing you with the father, with the head of household for you to do something that the head of household has to do. And I realized it and I was like, you're so right. Here I am going three times a week over there trying to fix a problem that they need to fix themselves. You know, and, and so a lot of times we, we become the source for people and they don't even know that we sometimes don't have the answer and we have to wait and we depend on a moment, on a time where God will give us that answer. And then we give them what God has given us 
but they don't even know that it didn't come from within us. It came from what God gave us to give them. Yeah. You know, so a lot of times yeah. people need to understand that that wisdom, that ability that we have, it's also supplemented by people and ministers and radio programs and books around us. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. We ourselves have issues. We ourselves, I mean, you and I, Pastor, yeah. let, let's take ministry away uh, from where we are right now and let's share who we were before. There's no reason why people should believe anything we say. Zero. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and that's Run. why, yeah. why the Bible says that's why our competence comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. you know? Because our competence is not enough for this job. Our competence is not enough for, for what we do. But our, our competence, our, our resourcing comes from what God has given us that while we were yet sinners, then Christ died for us and gave us the hope. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. And so, and, 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 you know, as, as we go through this life of ministry, we haven't even gotten into talking about our children, the, yeah. the, 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 the suffering and the pains of it. Yeah. I, I have a very soft heart for PKs because I was one of them. And, and I've kind of made it a, a point to not repeat a lot of the things that my father in ignorance did because he's first generation minister. That if I do them knowing the repercussions of it, then I am no longer a good steward of what I have. You know what I mean? Because yes, we, if I commit the same mistakes that my father committed, then I didn't learn from that history. You know what I mean? And so I'm not saying he did it all wrong, but I'm saying there's some things that I don't want to repeat because I was that kid that, that and just to give an example, and like you said, I'm not complaining. I had birthdays without my father because my father left to rescue some family you know, for some, from some issue. And I'm not saying that, that that's not what should have happened, but when it was meeting number 20, like, yeah. I think meeting number 20 could have held up another day, not on my birthday. You know what I mean? Definitely. You know, I, and, and y'all, yeah. And, and, and I've made, and I've made those ridiculous uh, decisions with, with, with my teenage kids. And till this day, they remind mm -hmm. me. Yeah. They remind me. I mean, uh, uh, family vacations, when they were teenagers, they say they were horrific, horrific. Yeah. And you're talking they, about I'm yeah. the man of God <laughs> taking my teenagers on a vacation to Galveston where they literally wanted to hop on a, on a they wanted to actually dr be on a Greyhound bus. That tells yeah. you how bad yeah. my parenting was. And, and I wanted the motel room to be this prayer closet. Yeah. And they're like, we're having a vacation. And yeah, it's horrific, horrific, horrific. Yeah. I, but you know what, Pastor? I'm glad I'm not that guy no more. Yeah. My I was Lord. At a minister's conference one time, and the, this uh, this guy was giving an example. He goes, there was a pastor who was sitting down on the couch, you know, drowsy, falling asleep from a long, tired day. The, the wife says, hey, we need some milk. You know, can you get some milk? And he's like, oh, you don't consider that I'm tired and that I just got home and I've been on the road and blah, blah, blah. Let me just sit here and relax. And so she's like, okay, I'm sorry. And so she just goes back. And within minutes, the phone rings and it's some person saying, hey, I'm stranded in the middle of the road. I'm out of gas or my car won't turn on, da, 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 da. Gets up from the couch, goes and puts his shoes on. When he comes out to the front door, the wife is standing right in front of the door. He goes, no, you're not. And he's like, but hermano, so-and-so needs me. He goes, well, your kids need milk. So when you get me a gallon of milk, then you can go help somebody get some gas. Because how are my kids not going to have milk and this hermano going to have gas in the middle of the road? And you're going to be available for everybody else except your family. Yeah. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we're just, and we're just barely touching right. <laughs> on those little issues. Yes. On the ha pastor to pastor. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and all these things, obviously the, the, these are things that, that you have dealt with personally, but also as a child, because you've been on both spectrums. Right. Mm -hmm. You've been, you've been the child. But you've always been you. You've also been the dad, and and even though you experienced it as a child, Pastor, yes, you 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 also still makes a better made the same mistake, mm -hmm. or worse, or worse. You know, so, the, so that goes that goes to show uh -huh. that a pastor can can teach you, disciple you, preach to you the contextual word. Uh, of the word of God 
the contextual mm -hmm. doc doctrine of the word of God. And is it's not necessarily because he's not a good teacher, yeah, or a good leader, or a good pastor, that that the sheep are gonna still be acting or behaving like goats. Right. Correct. And, and you know, there are mistakes that my father didn't commit because the times didn't serve themselves for it that now I might commit if I don't watch out for them because now the times have changed and going back to seasons, there are mistakes that we didn't commit 20 years ago because we didn't have social media. Today, right. I can't be neglecting father because I'm so worried about my Instagram space that I'm neglecting my children because I want to be popular on Instagram. So I'm, I can't say my dad taught me that because my dad didn't have to deal with that. I mean, what was Instagram back then? Nothing. You got yeah. a point right? And you had to wait five minutes to see the picture, you know? You know? Yeah. So now we, we, we got things on the fly. We are worried about likes. We are worried about follows. We are worried about all this yes, stuff. Yes, we are. And that, we are. You know, that the, 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 the we, we are more concerned about who's following us or who's tweet, retweeting us mm -hmm. than, than the effect that we're doing on our children. And then our children are happy because we're popular, but popular where? With a bunch of virtual people that we don't even know. Yeah. Our 5,000 <laughs> friends that that we don't know. Correct. Correct. You know, so it, it's, it's uh, you know, this, I'm happy for you being able to open this platform from pastor to pastor. I know we can get spiritual last week's uh, or the weeks before uh, uh, pastor to pastor with uh, was, was very uh, insightful, you know, as far as, uh, uh, you know, the, the church and how pastor was able to get the church from his dad. And now he's at a place where he's expanding now into Forney and everything. Yes. And, and those are, those are important things. And those are great. Absolutely. And, and and then here are the the the, the behind the scene things that are, that still affect us, you know. Yeah. You know, and and yeah. I and I'm gonna clarify and make this, you know, just very open. Mm -hmm. My dad is a great pastor. I'm not saying that he wasn't, but as a first generation pastor, there are things that were not taught unless life would have taught him itself. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. so he now face this situation my children are going to be ministers under a, a bunch of different situations that i hadn't had i mean think about this i remember when i was in high school and and the craziest thing was was watching this this whole gender thing begin to reveal itself now my children have friends that claim to be you know living a lifestyle that that we grew up knowing that it was not pleasing to god right. and now kids have to face that situation they're going to have to pastor the kids of this generation, mm. you know? And so, mm -hmm. so whatever I might think that I can teach them to be successful, it's going to be different. You know, the, yeah. what we're dealing with today is different than what we, what, what Jesus dealt with. And so I think that this, the space that you have opened up to talk to pastors, to talk to issues is not for us to cry and complain. It's for us to be able to be of support. I hope that there is a pastor that heard us today and said, okay, it's okay that I made a mistake or it's okay that I have family issues because they have family issues. It's okay that, that I, I get too busy sometimes. I need to back out from that and be more efficient than busy because, because sometimes, Pastor, this is a lonely road. <laughs> you yeah, know? very lonely. If you go and complain to your church membership about all of this, they're going to be, yeah. they're going to think you're just whining about your job. Well, I, 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 on, on Friday, Mm -hmm. I posted on Facebook and I put sad. Yeah. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, you. and it was like all of a sudden it was like, oh my God, Pastor is sad. It's it's over. It's over. <laughs> and and I was I was literally expressing my human condition. Correct. At the time, because at the end of the day, I am very transparent. Mm -hmm. Uh number two. I'm very human. Yeah. And number three, you know, at that moment, I was very sad. Yes. I was very sad at that moment. And I wanted everybody to know. And trust me, they know I yeah. don't whine and I don't complain. Yeah. I'm very thick skinned, but I'm also I have a, a big heart. And uh, but it, anyway, that, that day I got messages from people that I haven't heard in years. <laughs> and, and, so, but, but my expression was, I'm very sad 
at the state of the church. Yeah. I'm very sad at the state of our nation. Uh, but at the same time, I'm very excited at the opportunity right. that this is giving us. Mm -hmm. And I will say this again. In the state of the church, in the state of our nation, in the state of our family, it, it, it is not something to be perhaps very proud of. But but it, it's given us a great opportunity to do the things that we've been taught mm -hmm. and do the things that we've been prepared to do. And, and now's the time. I tell people, I tell people these things. I said, if this is not the time to pray and fast, I don't know what we're waiting for. Right. This is the time mm -hmm. because things are not going to ever be normal. Yes. But they're, they're going to get worse. And we're not talking, you're not speaking death. We're not. No. We're talking reality. Yeah. We are aware of the things that are going on around us. I mean, and the disciples came to Jesus and said, hey, we, we, we casted this, try to cast this things out and they're not doing anything. And Jesus said, hey, you know what? This genre of situations can only be broken through mm -hmm. fasting and prayer. You know, yeah. so even the disciples face moments where we're like, hey, we're doing what you told us to do, but things are not happening. You know? Yeah. Demons are not leaving. And Jesus said, <laughs> But this is another level, and, and and I'm glad that you saw it because now you know that that not everything solves itself with a book and a podcast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we're trying. <laughs> and yeah. Like, Jesus basically said to them, "You got to put a little bit more prayer." That is so true. That we is be true. We become so this is how it's done type of people. Yeah. That we realize when things have already elevated uh, uh, their their uh, intensity yeah. that we. Realize that it's not going to come out the way it always happens. It requires prayer. It requires yeah. fast. It requires more devotion. It requires yeah. updating technology. It requires updating yourself to believe that technology is part of the pro process. That's right. Use. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer, Pastor, that, that God speaks to everybody. Mm -hmm. And number two, he speaks to us with the word of God. Yes. And does he speak to us? Internally, through the Holy Spirit, absolutely. Absolutely. The Holy Spirit's role is to always lead us to the truth and always remind us of the words that were spoken by the word, Christ yeah. Jesus. And I'm also a firm believer that the, the way that that person was able to fulfill that ministry, guess what? You, can, you don't have to fulfill it that way mm. because God created you differently. Mm -hmm. I mean, in his image but with different characteristics. Yes. Pastor, and, both you and yeah. I in the same kingdom, yet we, we work in a different atmosphere. We work in a different demographics. And, and we met, uh, joined, we joined forces. Now we didn't meet. We joined mm -hmm. forces to do a ministry about a month and a half ago with the Dream yeah. Center. And yeah. you guys came from another place. I came from another place. Yeah. The body of Christ is the same. We were able to work together towards a community and and you you went back and did ministry the way you do it i stayed where i was doing ministry the way i did it but it was both efficient because absolutely. we in the work of the kingdom you know what i mean absolutely and and talking about and, and talking about that uh, -huh. uh let, 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 let before before we we just want to tell people about the garland dream center and and also their 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 great uh, availability there for you to volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's it's a it's a great ministry. It's a national ministry. Would would I dare to say it's an international ministry? Yes. Well, we are partner with a with a ministry called the Dream Center. It's originated in California uh, by Pastor Tommy Barnett from the Assemblies of God, and he is the pastor of Angelus Temple and founder of the Dream Center. And there's more than 300 dream centers around the world now because of that vision that the Lord uh, put in his heart. We find ourselves in the city of Garland, but we minister to all cities all across the Metroplex. So uh, if your church uh, has a certain uh, need, a certain uh, vision that they have, we're always looking for volunteers to be part of our outreach ministries. Uh, we are located in Garland, Texas. We are in the 
uh, somewhat industrial side, but I, we believe God placed us in, in a very good location. Uh, yeah. We are 2761 Oakland Avenue is the, is the address, but the phone number uh, is the best place to reach us. And we are at 972-360, uh, what is it, 3181, I believe it is. And then if you go to our website, we are garlanddreamcenter.org. Uh, for those of you who are not online and you're just listening to the podcast, garlanddreamcenter.org. We uh, are basically, like I said, our work is to bring hope to the community. Our uh, main focus is just basically to go into every community and share the gospel. We are fully faith-based, so we are able uh, to speak the gospel, to share the gospel, to minister the gospel. Uh, that's our main goal, and we use the resources uh, that we get, like from food pantry to donations for families. We just had a free garage sale, which is the one you guys were part of. Yes. Able to connect with the community this way and be able to uh, help by distribution of food during COVID-19. We gave out trucks and trucks of food uh, in different apartment complexes. Uh, we just partnered with you guys by giving you uh, tools and materials for yes. the 150 backpacks that you guys gave away in your community. That's right. So we're not looking to be the one that does it all. We're looking to be a resource for those who are out there on the on the streets. Uh, we can resource you with uh, with you know everything from school supplies, uh, uh, materials, biblical materials to be able to share the gospel in apartments. We have this thing called Kids Jam, which is the ministry that we do in different apartment complexes throughout the city, and it's just basically taking low income family apartment buildings. And being able to share the love of God, play games with them, give them snacks. Some of them don't eat until mom and dad come home at six mm -hmm. o'clock. So we're there at four o'clock when the bus drops them off. We feed them. Uh, we give them some fun stuff to do. We share the gospel with them. And we do that week after week. As soon We're starting right now up in Labor Day. So if you want to volunteer, you can go to our uh, page and there's a volunteer tab. And then there's a giving tab. We believe that missions is done with the feet of those who go, with the heart of those who pray, but with the money of those who give also. So if you're not able to go and pray, you can give so that we yes. that God has called us to do. Absolutely. It, like I said, I, I, I love it, man. I can't wait to get even more involved. And uh, I, I even I even sent my own information right now just as just personally. Right. You know, because if, even if even if we don't go as a group, which which we have a great volunteering group, you know what? One of the things we talk we talk about new life is that new life they know how to serve. Yes, and and one of the things that I put my name on there just because hey, even if it's not an event, because I tell people even when I when I teach about evangelism, mm -hmm. uh, I said, look, evangelism don't wait for an event, don't yeah. wait for an outreach, don't wait for a tent revival. Don't yeah. wait for a cross for 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 for, for what what you know, cross for cross cross for life. Don't uh -huh. wait for those things, but you you go tell somebody about Jesus. Make yes. it a personal thing. Serving should be a, a personal thing, just like right. evangelism should also be a personal thing. And and you know we we are more than happy with the result when you guys came over with us. Uh, they're still talking about how wonderful the help was at the, you know, at the end. You guys stay there till the end. I want to say thank you to all the New Life community, uh, the New Life DFW community that uh, is always there to help and to serve. I've seen what you guys have done, and, and it's an honor to be able to have partnered with you guys to do this work. Uh, the Dream Center appreciates you and everything that you guys did. And uh, we, we were glad also to be a part of what you guys did. Like I said, uh, and, and I tell people, don't, don't like you said don't wait for the for the event to do it yeah. to be available yep. and and god can do a lot of amazing things with that and and you know it's funny because we as the dream center we're an organization we're now this last week i made a phone call to a food bank in garland that we the 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 staff of the dream center are going to go volunteer hours yeah. at the food bank because we also believe that not only do we receive the benefit of people volunteering for us but me and the founder and the and the other outreach ministries in the Dream Center, we're gonna go and uh, put boxes in pallets and and move boxes around and make yeah, move them around. Is that yeah. what, it, what it's that's about? That's what it's all about. It, it's it, it's very satisfying, Pastor. Uh, like I said, we we were friends for a lot of years, mm -hmm. and then we recently just just uh, became. Uh, uh, 
real friends. <laughs> we were we were we were social friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, we, we were. And and that's just the amazing thing about it. You know, don't underestimate how God will bring two people together. Absolutely. You know? And uh, also, Pastor and myself, Pastor Padilla and myself, we will be in, I want to say, uh, Roy City mm -hmm. uh, on September, I believe, 12 and 13, if I'm not mistaken, or or something like that. Uh, we are we are having, is it September 12th? I, be, no, I think it's afterwards. I hope. So, uh, yeah. I, I hope so it's afterwards. But yeah, it definitely is afterwards. Yeah, I because it's, it's, it's the, the, the week. I think it's September 18th, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, we are going to be at Men's Encounter North. We right? will be at the Men's Encounter North. And we are very excited to hear Pastor Padilla preach. And, and it's just going to be amazing. You're going to love it. The, 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 the amount of pastors that are going to be there. Uh, uh, old friends of yours. ¿Cómo se llama ese uh, Dutch? Uh, Dutch Bradley, yes. Bradley will be there, man. So Dude, I am we can lock arms with him, man. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and many other uh, men of God as well. So it's going to be great. Thank you for having me, Pastor. I really appreciate it. Oh, um, man, you're a blessing to my life. And, uh, you know, th this ain't the last. This is just the first of many. All right. And uh, I can't wait to, to do many things in the kingdom of God, man. I love you, man. Thank you very much. I pray for everyone. I hope that this conversation was a blessing to someone out there. And if you want to reach out to us, you can find us through josuepadilla.com. If you want to personally uh, reach out to me, josuepadilla.com, that's our website. You can find our phone number. You can find our email address in there. And we'd love to be able to come and minister with you guys. We've done everything from, I told I told the pastor one day, I said, he's like, oh yeah, we'll invite you for a youth event. I said, brother, I'm already 47. I said, now I also do men's events, women's events, funerals, and weddings. <laughs> And funerals. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. But well, hey, I, man. <laughs> connect me to youth ministry because I did it for 20-something years. But uh, but God has just opened up doors. And I, I enjoyed being at the uh, Mesquite Men's Breakfast. And that has that was a really great blessing to be able to share. And oh, it, it, you know, Before you leave, uh, November the 13th, we are organizing uh, a, uh, a youth revival 2021 in the city of garland okay uh i'll keep you informed keep uh informed. but yeah i'll keep you informed and i'm i'll add you to our conversation because you have wisdom and we need it Perfect. and uh we just want to reach out there you know as pastors hey if we don't reach out to our youth you might as well just hang it up right now because yeah. it will be hung up for you yes yes it will you know so, and, and just a, a last leadership uh, thing here. I, a lot of people, my, you know, I have a, a small business and, and my wife, sometimes I meet another person that's doing business the way that I do business, you know, in the same market. And I start giving them tips and, and resources and uh, distributors and all this stuff that I do. And my wife is like, why are you giving away your secrets? I believe that in ministry, and I did this when I was a youth minister too, uh, a lot of people think that the more you give out secrets, quote unquote, the more you're shooting yourself in the foot. Mm. And I've come to discover that when you give people resources and help and you help them up, eventually it comes back to you. It might not be in the beginning because yeah. I tell my wife, when they, when they get there, when they arrive to their destination, I, you know, you can only trust that they will honor where honor is due. Yeah. And I've been able to now in my 40s being been able to hear young ministers say you know what i'm here because of you i'm here because of your counsel i'm here because of yes. those conferences that you made so if you're a leader don't be afraid to share your wisdom a pastor was saying right now we'll bring you into the conversation hey you know what if i can't do it anymore because i'm 47 and i can't stand lock-ins anymore <laughs> you know right. i'll my my wisdom i'll give you my ideas i'll give you my experience yeah. so that go and get something done that I wasn't able to get done. So don't be afraid of sharing the wisdom. The pastors, don't be a share, afraid of making leaders. Eventually, those leaders that you see as a threat will become your biggest uh, voices uh, and saying, I'm who I am because of my pastor. I'm who yeah, I am. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Those who invested and mentored me through the process. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'll, I'll close with this. Just like you uh, gave honor to your daddy, to your dad, and he continues mm -hmm. to preach. He continues to work. You know, I give honor to my pastor. You yes. know, my, my pastor, he's tough on me, man, but I appreciate it because I've you know, learned. 
I've learned. I went out to eat yesterday, and he was there yeah. we able to, to say hello and everything. And we were like, hey, look at that. We we don't only make um, uh, men's conferences. We also eat at the same places. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I yeah. love him. I love him, man. Hey, come and join us in our next Mesquite Minister Alliance. I'll send yes. you an invitation. Sure will. Come and have lunch with us. I will. Thank you for having me. God bless everyone, and we'll see you guys next time. God bless you, Pastor Padilla. Dios te bendiga. Adios. Hey, did you guys enjoy that or what? I mean, that was just amazing. That's the example of pastor to pastor, uh, two pastors sitting down, just having a conversation, laid back, speaking our hearts into the community and just letting people know just the, the amazing love that we have for, for the journey that God has us in. And even though we do work very, 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 very hard at doing what the Lord has called us to do, we, we also are very sensitive, amen, to our pains and to our hurts. And but uh, but at the end of the day, we wouldn't be doing anything else. So that was Pastor Padilla from the Dream Center. Just an, an amazing uh, uh, reputation, an amazing uh, life he's led and uh, greater, greater, greater other other great uh Interviews are coming up. Uh, Pastor Tony Rory from the from the Men's of Honor is going to be with us here in, in after I get back from vacation. And I believe this is my last interview until I get back. And then in September, it's going to get busy. Well, it's going to it's going to get uh, uh, well, I don't like the word busy, but uh, active. After I get back from vacation, we are going to get very active. We're going to be out there in the streets like we always do. And it's just going to be, once again, a fire for the Holy Ghost uh, until we close out 2021 and jump in with 2022, getting ready for Forney New Life Church, Forney FC, out there in the city of Forney, Texas. You've been listening. You've been watching. For those of you on podcast, you've been watching the Pastor to Pastor podcast. And we are going to leave you with one of our sponsors commercials and then we are going to head out we're going to come out and we are going to be uh getting ready for the next live fire radio show our next teaching coming up probably this afternoon or tomorrow but you've been listening to the pastor to pastor podcast Sumele. If you're looking for where to get your concrete, custom remodeling, pressure washing, and cleanup around your house, look no more. Born Again Men of All Trades. Contact Lino Davalos for a free estimate today. 214-923-8458. God bless. You are now listening to the DFW's number one podcast show, Pastor to Pastor. Come in, make yourself comfortable, and enjoy your time with pastors across the DFW, nation, and the world to pour out their hearts, Pastor to Pastor. Their desire is to live for Christ Jesus and serve Him. You are in the presence of God's shepherds given unto you, Pastor to Pastor. Suele!